Today we're going to show the simple steps required to install a Panessis storage appliance into an industry standard rack. Here's a quick look at what it will look like at the very end. We'll start off by installing into this empty rack. First, we'll remove the power strips on each side and then we'll begin the installation shortly after that. We start by opening the boxes we received on our pallet. The taller of the two boxes on top is what we refer to as the foundation kit and contains everything except the blades. The shorter box underneath on the bottom contains the blades. As you will see, items come out of the box in the same order in which you would install them. Installation starts at the top of the foundation box. Open it up and you'll see two rear rail components, a bag of screws, cage nuts, a screwdriver, and a 2 meter twin X cable used to connect the front panel ports of the director blade to the pass through ports on the shelf switches. Once we've removed the top insert, the next layer down contains the shelf enclosure. We'll take the shelf enclosure out and remove the outer plastic wrap and any additional packaging and then remove the foam inserts which might be in the shelf base. Foam inserts may be shipped inside the enclosure base to keep the air baffles from rattling while the box is being shipped. Back here, you'll notice the cover is on on one of the switch slots. In this case, it is actually covering slot 1, though more typically it comes covering slot 2. An empty switch slot can be covered using this cover. Here you'll notice the guide rails slide into the slots in the rear of the enclosure. Because the guide rails can slide in this manner, installation can accommodate a wide range of rack depths from 23 to 32 inches in length. Once we determine which 4U of space in the rack we will use to mount the shelf, we will install the cage nuts. There are four in the front and four in the rear, positioned like the diagram shows. Usually you can remember this as the front being the bottom of the top U and the top of the bottom U, while the rear is the top two of the bottom U. In our case, we have round holes in our rack and so do not need cage nuts. In the case of the standard square holes, you would use cage nuts. Once the cage nuts are installed, slide the shelf into position and have a helper hold up the rear of the shelf while the four screws are started in the front. Don't tighten them completely yet, and note the hel helper is only needed if there is nothing below the first shelf installed in the rack. Shelves after the first can rest on top of previous shelves as they are installed. In our case, we have a shelf that will hold our shelf enclosure up, so we slide it onto there, and one person can do this. Here we slide the left and the right rear guides and insert the screws and tighten. And here we finish tightening the screws in the back and then follow it with screwing in and tightening the screws in the front. Once we have the shelf enclosure installed, and the screws tighten down, we remove the next insert to expose the next layer down in the foundation box. This layer contains the components for the rear of the shelf. 
two power supplies, a battery module, and one or two shelf switches, depending on the model. From this level of the foundation box, we will remove and unpack the shelf switch, as shown here from its packaging, and then we'll unpack the power supplies and the battery. Note the latch mechanism in the rear of the power supply. You will need to pull this out before you slide the power supply into the shelf. Once the power supply is flush with the enclosure, you can push the latch mechanism in to seat the power supply. The battery module has a similar latch mechanism in the back. When unpacking and installing the battery, be careful of the contacts as they are live. There should be a yellow warning tape across the contacts which will need to be removed prior to, prior to sliding the battery into the shelf. Working from left to right in the rear of the chassis, install a power supply, then the battery, and then the second power supply. Once we finish this, we will discard the filler panel from the net to slot. This panel is used to maintain shelf integrity during shipping. Now, being careful to avoid static discharge, remove the shelf switches from their static bags and insert them into the slots between the power supplies and the battery module. Note that while the two shelf switches are the same, one is installed inverted from the other. Once in place, tighten the thumb screws on the switches to secure them to the shelf. Note that the switch on the right, as viewed from the rear, is the net one switch, and the one on the left is the net two switch. Again, avoiding static discharge here, we install the second switch. This would be the net two switch. As you can see again, it is installed upside down when compared with the other net one switch. Also in this layer of the foundation kit are two power cords and a serial cable. Set the serial cable aside for now. It will be used for additional configuration covered in the next video. Attach the two power cords, one from each power supply, to the power supply at the site and dress the cables appropriately to make them look good. The twin X cables that were previously set aside should be placed and routed at this point. They can be connected to the shelf switches in the back, but left loose at this point in the front. It's important to note that the cable that will plug into the top director port should route to the net one port five, and the one for the bottom director blade port should route to the net two port five. One trick you can use is note to, that each cable has a label near one end. You can reverse one cable so that one of the two cables has a label on the front of the rack and one has a label on the back. That way you know to plug the one with a label into the top director blade port and the one without the label into the bottom director blade port on the front. On the back, the one with a label plugs into the net 2 port 5 and the one without plugs into net 1 port 5. To insert twin X cables, you push until you hear an audible click. To release them depends on the variety of twin X cable. In this case, you have one where you push the lever in, which then releases the twin X cable. Where there is a pull tab, you will actually have to pull the tab to release the twin X cable, and then it will come out easily. 
Now that we have the switches installed and the cables from front to back installed, we'll connect the cables from the customer's network into the port 6 sockets on each of the Net1 and Net2 switches as shown here. Now that we've finished the back, we'll turn the rack around and begin the focus on the front. And now that we're looking at the front, we'll focus on the second box, which is the one of lower height. We'll remove the foam here that stabilizes the blades during shipment. And then we will pull out one of the blades. As you'll find out, this particular blade is a storage blade as opposed to a director blade. We'll learn in another video the differences between the two. Of particular note, the storage blade does not have any networking ports on the front of it, just the main grill and the latch. Both director and storage blades have this latch, which allows the blade to be opened and pulled out of the shelf. This is a different blade we call a director blade. You'll note that it still has the latch for opening it and the serial port there, but it also has networking ports on the top of the blade and also has the same connector as the back on the storage blade. Working from left to right, we'll insert the blades. We'll start with the director blade, which you can tell by the presence of the networking ports, as we mentioned. You push it in until it clicks, and then you press the latch to close. Next, we'll insert the storage blades. Again, you can tell the difference because of the absence of the networking ports and the presence of the grill on top. Push the blade in until it clicks, and then Flip the latch to lock it in place. Once the director blade has been installed in slot 1, the twin X cables from the back can be connected. Using the strategy we mentioned earlier, where one of the cables is labeled at one end and the other end is not, the cable with the label end will go into the top port, while the non-labeled twin X cable will go into the bottom port. You may, however, wish to defer this crossover connection until after the system is up and ready to be configured in order to minimize any issues when configuring the system as part of the customer's environment. For the serial cable connection, you can connect the serial cable as shown here into the front. Once we plug the power cables into the wall, we'll come back to the power supply units here and flip the toggle switch to the on position to power the units on. Once the power switches are on, you will want to pay attention to the LEDs. If power is working, you should see three green LEDs as shown. Finally, coming around to the front of the system, we simply make sure that there are no red LEDs on the blades in the front and connectivity is indicated by flashing LEDs on the networking ports. And that concludes our installation of the Panassas appliance.